all right welcome today we're gonna install Arch Linux on VirtualBox running on Linux Mint and you can do this on VirtualBox on any OS if you want Windows doesn't matter but I'm on Linux Mint I've got one that I've already got installed here but we're gonna do a new one you're gonna need to have the ISO downloaded and you can get it right here uh, I've already done that and I assume you could pause this and do that if you want to and come back when you're ready <clears throat> anyways uh, the RAM here we're just gonna leave it as it is one gig we're gonna create a virtual disk <clears throat> this is fine stock here uh, dynamically allocated that's fine next 8 gigs, I, uh, I usually say 20. If you want to put anything substantial on there, or run X or anything like that, you don't want to have to adjust this later because we're not going to make any LVM or anything like that. It's going to be just straight partitioning disks and installing. All right, so we're going to go in the settings here and make some changes. We're going to make this. For me, a multi-touch, you can leave it right here. Uh, I'll do that for now, too. Um, we're going to change the chipset, um, the processor, acceleration, all looks good. Uh, the network, you want to have bridge adapter. This just makes it easier if you're going to SSH into your installer to configure it. Um, anyways there we go that looks all good I think we're all good okay actually no we need to go here to storage and add that ISO we're gonna add this one and okay all right now let's boot her up and see And we've come to the root arch ISO prompt. One of the most important things you're gonna want to do when you install Arch Linux, and this really uh, goes for even people that have installed it a million times. You're gonna the Arch install guide is is a, a live document. So uh, when things change, uh, they're updated in this document. So as much as you know how to install Arch Linux and you know what you're supposed to do, there are certain things that may change. For example, uh, Arch used to be able you used to be able to pack strap it without including the kernel. When they separated, they took the kernel out of the base package. Uh, and if you don't know that, you would. Uh, install arc you would configure your uh, um, system deboot uh, entries and kaput there's no there's no kernel so when you reboot it says it can't find it and I'm sure you would see things and you're making it CPIO if there was no kernel so but anyways that's a very important thing to know so that it's not like you're stupid because you're using the Arch Linux install guide uh, it, is a, it is a very live tool that helps you uh, so you don't end up having a borked install and have to go figure it out later. Anyways, we'll get going. So I am going to go past the pre-installation stuff here. I'm not going to do this part here. If you're very, very uh, security uh, conscious, you may want to do this. 
We've already booted the live environment. It says connect to the internet. We're gonna see if we can ping. Ping. And I just do google.com because it's easier to type. Well, no IP6. And I'll tell you why that is because the IP6 on this thing is bored, but four works. Anyways. So we've got the ping working. And it's gonna we're gonna set the time now. To NTP. Set. And that's done that. And now we're going to CF disk. And we know it's actually, we'll show you the F disk dash L uh, output there. So you see that top entry, the 20 gig entry, that's ours. We're going to do CF DISK and then DEV. SDA. Now it's telling it's telling us over here that we can use uh, F disk, but I'm showing you CF disk because it's simple and it's menu driven, kind of like a curses app. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna set it as a DOS disk, and then we're going to create a new. We're gonna make it the entire size because we're not gonna do any swap for this install. And then we're going to make it bootable because it's not EFI. And then we're going to write it. Okay. And then we can get back to our prompt. So down here it's telling us about disk layouts with BIOS MBR, which is what we're using, and not EFI with GPT. So it's going to say we want to mount it on that partition we just made. So now if we do F disk dash L again, you'll see that we have that partition, that 20 gig Linux partition. So it's going to tell us that these are the example mount points. So now we're going to make fs.ext4 dev sda1 that's going to format that partition and that was quick now we get to installation so we're going to mount dev sda1 that linux partition we just formatted on mnt now we're going to pack strap MNT base and now you see before you didn't have to put this Linux and Linux firmware in here and we're gonna do base devel and DHCP CD all right we're gonna let this run and We'll be back. Okay, so we've finished the process of the pack strap and we're we're getting ready to configure the system. <clears throat> There's the tool in on the Arch ISO that's that generates your FS tab uh, for your uh, for your install, so we'll run that. And that dash U is telling uh, the app that we want to use the UUIDs of the drives in the FS tab. So that part's done. And now we can CH root into the system to configure it. All right, so now you're going to set up your time zone. I'm in America, so this is how you would do that if you're here. And I'm sure you can do a slash and then tab tab and it shows you all the different ones but we're in America and I'm in Los Angeles so we're gonna set that it to ETC local time
that part's done there and now we're gonna do the hardware clock command sys 2 hc sys 2 hc invalid option oh I need a double here alright now we're gonna edit our locale file and to edit it we're gonna need nano so we can pacman dash s nano then we'll nano the etc locale dot gen that wasn't that wasn't not right locale dot gen and I'm going to use the English UTF-8, the example up here. Uh, by just taking the comment uh, off of the front, find your language and, and save the file, control X. And then we're going gen to gen generate the locale. So, stuttered there a little bit. That was weird. Locale gen. And there it's the one I uncommented. It's generating that. That's done. And then you're gonna go to ETC. You're gonna need to nano again, or you can if you know VI, then you probably don't even need to watch this video. Let's see. Locale. Dot. Gen. No, locale. Dot. Conf. Sorry. And we're gonna do the link here. You'll see a lot of complaints from the installer uh, if this thing is not set. The Pac-Man and stuff. And this is going to be the same exact uh, thing you uncommented in the locale gen. All right. All right. So that's finished localization. Now we're going to configure the network as far as your host name. ETC host name. And we're just going to put our arch as our host and then nano etc hosts this file has been created already and we're just going to do this put the loop back as localhost and we're done there now you got to do your init ram fs which is all that the init ram fs need to boot Make init cp io dash p. And then we're going to set a password for root. You just type PASSWD and set it to whatever you like. All right, that's done. And now we're going to set up the bootloader. Okay, now it's time to get to the bootloader. So you can get to that by clicking the bootloader link here. And I usually right click on it and open in a new tab just because. I don't want to lose place here because there's post installation stuff and if I have to go back to do anything you're right where you were at so uh, good to go there okay so we're gonna use grub because grub works great and it works great on uh, the type of uh, the type of disk we have and the type of boot we're using for BIOS not UEFI if we're using uh, UEFI I would definitely go system deboot it's very very clean but we're gonna be using grub so we'll go there alright so we know we're not using on UF, UEFI we're using the BIOS and master boot record so we have to install grub because it's not doesn't come with it so we're gonna install grub
All right, and now what we have to do is install Grub. And our disk is DEVSDA. The partition that we're installing on is DEVSDA1, but Grub needs to know the actual disk. Uh, it doesn't need another partition. So there we go, it's installing, and no errors were reported. Now, before we uh, boot, Grub needs to know about our system. So we are going to do a Grub configure here. See the configuration? We need to run this command. Uh, idea about it, uh, the OS. So Grub MK config, and it's the output dash O slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and we'll run it and it found Linux and the init ram fs so we're good to go uh, at this point we can reboot and we'll be in arch also before you boot we should enable uh, our DHCP CD. All right. That way, when we reboot, we'll have network and we won't have to worry about that. It'll just get it. We can configure network manager or anything else later on if we want to, but this will at least get us an IP and network when we reboot the Arch for the first time. And you can reboot. Actually, we'll have to exit the CH root. And then we'll have to system control power off. All right, now that we've powered off, we want to go into our settings and take the disk out. Storage, and we want to remove disk. And okay, once we've done that, we can start our VM. And we should get a boot menu. Yep, there it is. Grub version and arch. There, let's boot it. Log in for the first time. And ping dash four google.com. Network works. Now you can do whatever you want but arch is installed and running so you're good to go thanks for watching and let me know if you'd like to see how to set up x uh, and maybe i3 to be fluid as it would be on windows here on linux uh, and i can do that have a good one